Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Beacon Church welcomes you to the premiere of the Nativity and the Coffee Shop. We will begin in a few short moments, so please take this time to be sure your cell phones are turned off or silenced. Thank you for your cooperation. Sit back and enjoy the show. gotten yourself into now? You see, I'm always getting myself into these silly situations. That's what happens when you get to be the ripe old age of 102. Sometimes the old thinker don't work so good. I get myself into such trouble. I don't know where I'm going. I forget what I'm doing. Sometimes I forget what I'm saying. Where on earth am I? How did I get here? Oh, Layla, what did you get yourself into now? Oh, hi, hello. Oh, hi, hello. Hi, my name is Sarah Fina, but most people just call me Sarah. Oh, hi, Sarah, my name is Layla. I and know who you are, Layla. Okay, that's a little weird, but anyway, I seem to have just woken up. I and can tell. Yeah, I think I just took a nap on the floor, <laughs> but I don't remember how I got here, so I wonder if you could tell me, where on earth am I? Uh, nope. A uh, nope what? I can't tell you where on earth you are. Why not? Did you kidnap me to be on one of those survival wilderness shows? Because I'll tell you what, I can't eat the food that those guys eat. <laughs> No, I can't tell you where on earth you are because we're not on earth. Oh. Are you catching on? Yeah. Am I dreaming or something? Because usually my dreams have more bounce houses and panda bears and cupcakes. <laughs> <laughs> no, where we are is better than any dream you could ever dream. Okay, okay. Just tell me, what is going on? All right, all right, no more messing around. I am an angel, and you are in heaven. Welcome to paradise.
Oh, heaven, this is really awesome. I have been waiting so long to get here. This is so exciting. Will you show me around? I can't wait to see the land flowing with milk and honey. Oh, the lion laying with the lamb. Oh, the pearly gates and the tree of life. And when do I get to meet God? When do I get to ask him all of my questions? Whoa, 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 Layla, let's not get ahead of ourselves. You might have lived to 102 before coming home to heaven, but here you don't look a day over 30. Oh, hey. Oh, gee, thanks. Oh, hey, wait a minute. Isn't Peter supposed to greet me at the gate? Oh, I'm just covering for him. He's on a coffee break. <gasps> Yes! There's coffee in heaven! I'm so happy I love coffee! Well, I'm more of a tea person myself, but we've got a long day ahead of ourselves. Do you want to go grab a cup? Oh, absolutely. I know just the spot. You can tell me more about those questions you have for God, and maybe we'll run into some familiar faces along the way. have my usual. This is my friend Layla. She's new here. Hi, Layla. What can I get for you? So I will please have a two-thirds calf triple ristretto affogato venti vanilla bean frappuccino double blended with whipped cream, caramel drizzle, salted caramel topping, and holy inclusions. What? I know what I like. <sighs> Coming right up. So, you mentioned you had some questions for God. What did you want to ask him? Well, I have so many questions for God. There's never any answers. It's been so confusing, I can't figure it out. So where should I even start? Well, I guess I can just start right at the beginning, right? I spent most of my life thinking it was all great. Never worried or feared, but that's changed as of late. So I'd like to ask God a question or two. Well, actually, it sounds to me like you've got a few. Why are there floods and why is there drought? And why doesn't God just even all that out? Why is there sickness? Why is there pain? I really want to ask him so he can explain. I wore rose-colored glasses most of my life. And when they came off, you saw heartache and strife. So if God's got some time, you know it won't take too long. I really want to ask him where it all went wrong. Why are there typhoons, tornadoes, earthquakes? And what is the deal with the poisonous snakes? Why is there poverty, suffering, and hate? My questions, they really can't wait. I wasn't too fond of my grumpy neighbor Mike. Couldn't I live next door to people that I like? Why were taxes so high? Why'd my grown kids never call? Don't you know that's all a part of mankind's dreadful fall? Why were winters so cold and summer scorching hot? You know, 80 year rounds would have really hit the spot. And why was I bullied back in middle school? I want to let him know that really wasn't cool. I don't understand why our pets have to die. Why do some friendships end? Why do children often cry? Why is there poverty? Why is there disease? When isn't God supposed to hear all of our pleas? And why do grandpas have to grow old? And why my family's home have to get sold? Some hardships were your fault, you must confess. But wasn't God supposed to clean up our mess? Right? Two-third calf, triple ristretto affogato, venti vanilla bean frappuccino, double blended with whipped cream, caramel drizzle, Give salted it. caramel toppings with no inclusions for Layla. Thank you. <laughs> so fun. Cheers. Oh, uh, hey, Joe. Usual. That's Joseph. Joseph, like Joseph with the Technicolor dream coat? No, the other Joseph? Joseph, like Joseph and Mary? No, uh, Joseph of Arimathea, the one who gave his tomb to Jesus. Oh. Oh, cool. Mm. <laughs> this delicious coffee. Very good. Mm, the best. Mm, best. 
in heaven. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's the real Joseph. Let me introduce you. No way. <laughs> Oh, hi, Joseph. Oh, hi. <laughs> this is Layla. Layla, Joseph. So, hi. you're Joseph with the Technicolor dream coat? <laughs> Why? Why does everybody pick that Joseph first? No, no. Joseph the carpenter, as in Mary and Joseph. No <laughs> way. Uh-oh. Oh. I'm sorry. Really? <laughs> Ah, uh, okay, sorry. Um, so, you like raised Jesus, huh? Uh -huh. That sounds like a pretty cool gig. Um, uh, what do you mean? Well, I mean, it was the Messiah, the golden child, the yeah. chosen one. <laughs> it must have been a walk in the park. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a, what makes you think that raising Jesus would be a walk in the park? What do you mean? Uh, okay, well, let me ask you. Did you have kids? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did your kids make your life a walk in the park? Well, that's a little different. I mean, Jesus was the perfect child. Okay, okay. Uh, oh, thank you. Did... Did having Jesus in your life make your life a walk in the park? Well, not exactly. Uh, absolutely not. Oh, hey, Mary. Hi. Hi, Mary. Layla, this is Mary. Mary is in the mother of Jesus? No way! Oh, oh no. Oh. Oh. Really? Sorry. Again? You're cut yeah, off. I'm gonna go stand over here now. Hi, oh, Layla. Sorry. It's nice to meet you. So sorry for interrupting, um, but... Go on, Joseph. Tell Layla how nice and neat our lives are. Oh. Raising the perfect child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus, he made our lives way, way better, but he also made our lives way, way harder. Ugh. That sounds a little overdramatic for the parents of the literal Messiah. <laughs> Excuse me, because aren't you the one that comes from a generation that complained all the time, even though you had everything? You had things like refrigerators. And airplanes. <laughs> and pizza. And, and cell phones. And antibiotics. <laughs> and pizza. <laughs> and disposable diapers. And yeah, pizza. Mm. Not to mention the entire word of God with everything you needed to know about Jesus and who he was and what he was going to do. Yeah, we did not have all that when we were raising him. All right, all right, all right. I can see how even raising Jesus was awesome. I can see how it could also get a little bit messy. <laughs> a little messy? No, no, no. Joseph. It was up to my elbows. <sighs> Joseph, messy. please don't tell that story. <laughs> it was messy from the very beginning. Okay, just, 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 just imagine. You're in a, a, a dark, dirty, cramped stable. It's just you and your ultra-pregnant wife, and then you hear her say... Joseph! Is this a joke? It's way too early. Your water broke. We're not ready. The midwife is days away. You want me to? <laughs> no way, no way. How about you cross your legs and we pray? Now, oh, now, this baby's coming today. I am in over my head. I am in. My, over my head, I am in over my head, out of my death, hanging on by a thread. Alone in a stable, and I'm unable to deliver a baby on my own. In over my head, in over my head, in over my head. <laughs> Is it okay to, this is awkward, I've never seen you, moving onward, you're my wife, I know it's okay, but we're both virgins, so this is oh so strange, hate to be the one to complain, but the miracle of life, 
messier than people say. I am in over my head. I am in over my, over my head. I am in over my head. Out of my death hanging on by a thread. The angel's announcement had an announce of warning about this moment here in over my head, in over my head, in over my head. Yeah. I am in over my head. I am in over my, over my head. I am in over my head. Out of my death hanging on my thread. I think that he's close now. It's getting real gross now. And I just don't know how this goes next. Hear what I said in over my head, in over my head, in over my head, in over my head, in over my oh, oh, oh my goodness, go, 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 something and that that was just the beginning see god god knew what he was doing when he made me responsible for his son but in the day-to-day -day workings of it it's hard to see i mean god has a very very strange way of working things out sometimes what do you mean well for instance uh, imagine your nation's leader would you have a king a Chief? president? Okay, your president. Your president has it in his head that, that your child is going to grow up and lead a conspiracy to overthrow the government. So what he does, what he does is he sends the entire army to come and kill your kid while you're still figuring out how to change his diapers. Wait, I'm sorry. Who was changing his diapers? I changed a few <laughs> along the way. Ah, sounds like my husband. <laughs> hey, we didn't have those fancy disposable diapers that you guys had. We had the, you know, the fold and tuck and make sure it's not too tight and not too loose and clean up all the... Anyway, anyway. The point is, we were, we were just adapting to life with a newborn and we find out the king wants to kill our son. Yeah, that's a little intense. The diaper thing? That was intense. <laughs> no, the other thing. <laughs> oh, man, it's crazy. Fortunately, God, he, he sent an angel to warn me in a dream, and we were able to escape to Egypt, but we had to live as refugees, as asylum seekers in Egypt for what felt like an eternity. Oh, that was definitely not the ideal honeymoon. <laughs> no. No. Oh. After Herod died, we felt like it was safe to return home to Israel, but, but even then, even then, I just had it in my head, if this king wanted to come and kill Jesus, who's to say the next king wouldn't want to do the same? Yeah, but, you know, fortunately, Nazareth was in the middle of the boonies, so <laughs> we felt pretty safe raising Jesus there. Yeah, and yeah. You know, yada, 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 he grew up, he started his ministry, changed the whole world, you know the rest of the story. He Whoa, whoa, whoa. You just, like, yada, yada, yada over 25 years. <laughs> what happened during that time? Ah, <laughs> uh, not much. I mean, well, I, I started my carpentry business, got to know Mary. We had a bunch more kids, taught my sons the trade. Uh, what? You guys raised Jesus. There must have been some excitement. Didn't he ever, I don't know, walk on bath water, <laughs> heal grandma, feed the whole town with a bag of goldfish crackers? <laughs> Good one. <laughs> uh, no, no, and no. Uh, man, um, can you think of anything? Not really, just, you know, bedtime stories and kiss boo-boos. I guess I just would have expected a little more pizzazz, you know? Well, I hate to disappoint you, but it honestly was not that glamorous. 
Although there was that that one time when we were leaving oh, Jerusalem after yes. Passover. Oh, here we uh, go. So, again. Uh, we went to Jerusalem for Passover, mm -hmm. and after it ended, we head on home, and we realize we forgot Jesus. I swear, I thought he was with you. <laughs> James told me he was with you. <laughs> then again, James was seven at the time, so he might not have been the most reliable witness. <laughs> so, we lost the Son of God. We lost the Son of God. <sighs> it was really bad. The literal savior of the world. We were like horrible parents. <gasps> uh, we found him, though. <laughs> It took us three days, but we found him. It took him. you yeah. three days to find him. Yes, but we found him. Let's focus on that part of the story. Okay, fair enough. Oh. <laughs> but that's it, though? No more excitement? No, not really. It's just normal, everyday yeah. life. In fact, I, I actually passed away before Jesus even started his ministry, so I never got to, to see the, I don't know, the why behind all the crazy stuff we had to go through. That's relatable. Mm. I have so many questions about all the things that happened in my life. I held out this hope that God would show me why I had to go through this or that, but I never got an answer. In fact, I'm looking forward to asking him now that I'm here. Okay. Oh, I felt the same way when I first got here. Oh, yeah? And what did he say? I actually never ended up asking him. What? <laughs> I, I realized that even if I were to ask him my questions and he was to give me an answer and explain why he did what he did, I don't know if I'd be able to understand it still. That's weird. <laughs> I get that, but look, I, I wasn't alive when it happened, but I still caught wind of what happened to Jesus. Uh, another insecure king came along and had him executed, and, and when I heard this, I was like, no, 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 this has got to be a mistake. No! but it wasn't a mistake. In fact, I found out this, this was God's plan all along, and that what seemed like an execution was really not even an execution, it was a sacrifice, that God sacrificed Jesus for the sins of the world, for my sins. And get this, get this, sorry. The whole reason he did that was because he loves me? <laughs> The creator of the universe loves little old me so much that he's not going to spare his own son but give him up for me? I'm sorry, but I still can't wrap my mind around that. And it, it got me thinking, if I can't understand why God would love me like that, what makes me think I could understand all of the other decisions he makes along the way? And... I don't know, it, uh, it just became enough to know how much God loves me, and I became comfortable with all the things I don't know. That sounds nice for you, but I'm not sure I'm there yet. Did somebody say, are we there yet? I hate that question. <laughs> no, I said, I'm not there yet. Wait, who are you? And why do you hate that question? You don't want to know. This is Balthazar. My name is Seth. Sorry for eavesdropping. Nice to meet you. I'm Layla. She's new here. Oh, you're a newbie. Welcome. Thank you. And these are my new friends, Mary and Joseph. They're the Mary and Joseph, like from Christmas. I know. I was there too. You were there too? <laughs> he sure was. You're looking at one of Bethlehem's finest shepherds. Hello, Seth. Balthazar. Mary. Joseph. Sarah. Balthazar, Seth. Joseph, Sarah, Mary. Seth, Balthazar. Hey, guys, come join us. Pull yeah. up a chair. So you're a shepherd? Like, angels filled the night sky while you were tending your flock, saw the baby Jesus, told it from the mountaintop, one of those shepherds? Yeah, sure. That's me. <laughs> that night must have been so magical. I can see why you'd think that. <laughs> it wasn't magical to see angels fill the night sky? Well, how familiar are you with angelic appearances? Uh, Sari here is my only first-hand experience. Do you know what the first words out of an angel's mouth are every time they show up to someone? Uh... Fear not. Nine times out of ten, their opening line is, fear not. And do you know why they have to greet you with, fear not? Because... 
because they're terrifying. Beyond terrifying. Hold on. Yes. What do you mean? She doesn't seem so bad. No. It started with the sheep. One after the next, they began to wake up and stir. It was as if they could sense something. And then, all of a sudden, it was as if someone turned on the sun with the flip of a switch. We start scrambling because we have no idea what's happening, and we can't see anything because we've just been blinded by the light. One of the guys bumped into me, knocked me into the fire. Oof. That does sound a little scary. <laughs> a little scary? Waking up to a scorpion crawling up your leg is a little scary. <laughs> Knowing that you have to fight off a pack of wolves that are trying to eat your sheep is scary. And having to share a tent with Jeremiah after watching him pound a whole pot of beans for dinner is <laughs> scary. <laughs> Angels are something else. Wait. That was you? <gasps> Two of the guys actually wet themselves. <gasps> and one of them, well, let's just say two guys did one, and one guy did two. <laughs> oh! Wait, were you the guy that did two? <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> anyway. So the angel goes on to tell us this really good news, that the long-awaited Messiah had been born in Bethlehem, and that we'd find him wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. That sounds so exciting. <laughs> it was. It really was. Our people had been waiting for this for centuries. To hear that it was finally happening and that we were getting a front row seat, we were beyond excited. <laughs> that, that is, until we got into town at Bethlehem. Why? What happened? Well, you see, the angel told us that we would find the baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. Do you notice anything missing from that? Wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger isn't exactly an address. Oh, yeah. I guess I never really thought about that. Yeah. Apparently, she didn't think about it either. And so now, we're just a mob of shepherds wandering the town at night, asking to see people's mangers. Let's just say people were not thrilled. I know, I look buttoned up now, but back in the day, we shepherds were uh, pretty gross. Mm -hmm. Beyond gross. Yeah. But you did find them eventually. You got to see the baby Jesus. That had to be something. You're right. After having the living daylight scared out of us and wandering the streets for a couple of hours and having door after door slammed in our face, <laughs> we finally found Mary and Joseph. Knock, knock. Hello. Hi. Uh, sorry to bother you. We just spoke to the innkeeper, and he said there was a couple staying here in the stable. He said the wife was enormously pregnant. His words, not mine. She was enormously pregnant. <sighs> I mean, she was normally sized pregnant. Now she's normally sized post-pregnant. I love you. You're beautiful. Very smooth. What my clumsy husband is trying to say is, I already had the baby. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Well, congratulations. But uh, just out of curiosity, where is the baby now? Just out of curiosity, what do you want with my baby? Because... No friends? I'm getting a Stranger Danger vibe from you guys right now. Joseph? Yeah, I think it's time you guys... Wait, 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 wait. Just give us a second, please. We understand how weird this is. I'm not sure you do. Oh, really? We do. <laughs> We've had people telling us all night how creepy we are. <laughs> we get it. But please, just hear us out. We're shepherds. Yes, we could tell that much by the smell. But, uh, what are you doing here? 
Well, we were just in the fields, tending to our flocks, minding our own business. And then all of a sudden, an angel appeared. It was terrifying. Been, Been there. there. Well, the angel went on to tell us that we would find the baby born in Bethlehem. So we've been wandering around town for the past two hours trying to find him. And we were hoping that he'd be here. Wow. Um, yes, he's here. He's sleeping right over there. We didn't have a crib or anything, so we made one out of the manger. He's in a manger. That must be him. Wait, wait, wait. How can we be sure it's the right baby? I got this. What's he wrapped in? Um, swaddling cloths? Swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. Check and check, boys. I think we found the Messiah. Do you mind if we? Of course. <laughs> Take a look. <laughs> Hoping he'd like glow or something. At least the halo would be nice. Does he have a name yet? Uh, Jesus? Oh, is that a family name? No. Oh. How long are we gonna stay here staring at a baby? I don't know. This is getting awkward. I know. We should leave. I know. Wow. Look at the time. We should best be on our way. Yeah, yeah you two, uh, get some rest. Yeah, thanks. thanks so much for having us. Best of luck raising our savior. Um, try not to screw it up. Yeah, best of luck. We should probably get back to our sheep. <gasps> our sheep! In the chaos of the night, we forgot about our sheep. I started to panic. Do you know... What happens when you leave a sheep without their shepherd? And so I was trying to get us out of there as quickly as possible, but it was dawn now, and the town was starting to wake up, and the other shepherds wanted to stop and tell every single person we saw about the angel and the baby Messiah. It felt like we could not get out of there. That sounds like my parents at church when I was a kid. They just kept talking and talking to all these people. I just wanted to go home. That's exactly what it felt like. The whole way home, they were strolling along without a care in the world, singing worship songs. But the singing came to a quick halt as soon as we got back. Uh, how bad was it? It was mayhem. Several of the sheep apparently wandered off or were stolen or who knows, but they were gone for good. Some of the sheep had wandered so far off, it took us days to recover them. And one of them definitely became a late-night snack for some predator. Oh, wow, that's awful. This was our livelihood. I'm not going to lie, for quite a long time, I hated that night. I felt so foolish. We left our sheep like sitting ducks, and for what? To see some baby spit up on himself. I... Couldn't understand why God had even bothered. Had I only known then what I know now. What do you mean? Well, if I knew who that baby was and what he was going to do, I would never leave his side. But you did know who he was. She told you he was the Messiah. Didn't you tell them yeah, that? Well, we knew he was supposed to be the Messiah, but we didn't really know what that meant at the time. If I had known that he was, in fact, the Son of God, if I knew that one day he was going to die on a cross for me and rise from the dead three days later, if I knew that every one of my sheep that was eventually sacrificed in the temple was just a sign pointing ahead to his sacrifice. If I knew any of that, I would have scooped that baby up in my smelly shepherd arms and never let him go. 
And these two wouldn't be able to beat me away with a stick. Oh, yeah. I don't know, it's probably best I didn't know. I definitely would have made it awkward. Oh, what's this? Thank you. Oh, oh. Very good. Thank you. Nice. Wow. So Thank good. you. Take this one. Thank you. So, what's it like being friends with someone who got to meet the baby Jesus? Well, I was actually there too. You were there too? Are you also a shepherd? Are you Jeremiah? Oh, wait, no, you told me what your name is. What's your name again? My name is Balthazar, and no, I'm not a shepherd. Well, then who are you? Here's a hint. Are you a singer? <laughs> no, you don't recognize that song? It's We Three Kings. Get out! Oh, oh. Oops, uh... Don't worry, they're very generous here. They'll just get us another one. So, you're a wise man, then. Wise man, huh? Depends on who you ask. <laughs> Long after I died, people started calling me a wise man, but while I was alive, most people thought that I was a fool. Why did they think you were a fool? Well, imagine staring up at the stars one night, and all of a sudden, you see one that you don't recognize. What would you do? Um, I lived on Long Island. We didn't really see stars. <laughs> Fair point. Well, I can tell you, most people did nothing. There were millions of people alive at the time who either didn't notice or didn't care. I was the exception. I always just thought that the star was like a spotlight that just shined down on the manger. <laughs> Not quite. So then, how did this star lead you to Jesus? Oh, ooh, yeah, I've how? always been wondering yes. this. Yeah. Can you explain tell this us. to us? Uh, yeah. So, it was tricky to figure out at first, but basically... That makes so much yeah. sense! So that showed you how to use the star. Yeah, so we saw the star and then... Of course. Mystery so, solved. Thank always you. Always wanted for to know. That. But wait a minute. How did you figure all of that out in the first place? So, I know people have different <gasps> names for me and my friends. Uh, wise men, three kings. But we weren't kings at all. We were magi. It was our job to study the stars and all sorts of religious texts. And we also served as uh, advisors to our king. So, you were nerdy politicians with horoscopes. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, in our library of religious texts, there was a scroll written by a Jewish prophet named Daniel. It had been written centuries before. Oh, is that Daniel like Daniel in the lion's den, Daniel? That's the one. Oh, I love that guy. We play pickleball together on Tuesday mornings. Pickleball? Yeah, fastest growing sport in the afterlife. <laughs> Okay, so you had the book of Daniel in your library. We sure did. My best friend Malchior and I were just kids when we first came across the scroll, and it always intrigued us. We'd seen all the ways his prophecies had come to pass over the centuries, and we knew that it was all leading to something big that was going to happen in our lifetime. And then, late one night, a star appeared. Malchior, Malchior, wake up, he's here. Who's here? And what is that noise? Never mind that, that's just Gaspar tuning his oboe. He's here, the one from Daniel's prophecy. He's here? How do you know? Well, come here, take a look. Look at the stars. What do you see? Wait, what's that star? That's his star. How do you know? Well, I know because... <laughs> we have to wake the others. Oh, this isn't going to go well. Can't we just sneak out quietly and not tell anyone? 
No, we can't keep this to ourselves. They might want to know. After all the ridicule they've given you over the years for clinging to the Daniel Scrolls, what makes you think they're going to listen to you now at 3 o'clock in the morning? I don't know. Maybe they'll listen. It's your funeral. Ariach, Aspenaz, <laughs> wake up. What time is it? I'm sorry, oh. I know it's late, but I saw a new star. The anointed one of Israel has arrived. The long-awaited king of the Jews is here, and the star will lead us to him. What are you talking about? Is this more of your Daniel scroll nonsense? Who cares about some Jewish king? Who even cares about their God? We have our own gods. Uh, actually, just a sec. This could be good for us. Why don't we send these losers out on their wild goose chase? It'll take them at least a year and a half to get there and back. And maybe they won't even make it back. A whole year without these imbeciles. <gasps> maybe we could send Gaspar <gasps> to... Gaspar in the house! What's everybody doing awake in the middle of the night? Are you guys having a party without Gaspar? <gasps> party time! <laughs> Definitely send Gaspar. <laughs> so, on second thought, we think you might be onto something. We think you and Melchior and Gaspar. No, not, not Gaspar. Gaspar. You two and Gaspar should go check it out. <laughs> Three wise men on a journey to Judah Searching for the Messiah And they're claiming he's beauty and grace Thank you for the invitation But we are too busy to go on some wild goose chase Three wise men on a journey to Judah Searching for the Messiah And they're talking as if he's king of kings But if it will get you to leave us We'd be happy to give you magic Some of the gifts you'd want to bring Gold is a precious commodity That you can wear as a necklace or ring But it's not Whatever oddity you, you three are claiming is king. king. Wise men on a journey to Judah, searching for the Messiah, and they're talking as if he's something grand. Thank you for the invitation, but go now and please get lost in a distant foreign land. Three wise men on a journey to Judah, searching for the Messiah, and they're talking as if he's king of kings. But if it'll get you to leave us, we'd be happy to give you magi some of the gifts you'd want to bring. Frankincense is not for baby boys. It's an oil we burn to worship the gold. And the fact that you would worship him is just, just a little bit odd. And myrrh is an oil for burial to honor the dead. And the martyrs that say, take these gifts, dear three foolish men. Now, now you, you must be on your way. way. And myrrh and frankincense, your Daniel scroll, it makes no sense. But while you're there, get us a souvenir. Get us a souvenir. You're going to crown the Jewish king. If you return, then don't you bring Gaspar, Gaspar the, the Daniel scroll back Gaspar here. the Daniel scroll back here. Don't need to the king. So we took off. It took us almost five months to get to Jerusalem, and the entire time Gaspar kept asking, are we there yet? 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 Now I see why you hate that question. You probably know the rest of the story from that point. We saw King Herod. We learned that the baby was born in Bethlehem, and then we went and found the baby. It must have been so great to get home and tell everybody that you were right. I wish, but that is not exactly how it went down. Oh, no? No, well, we were certainly excited to get back home, but believe it or not, most people seemed disappointed that we made it back, and they were certainly upset that we didn't lose Gaspar somewhere along the way. <laughs> Poor Gaspar. So, we just had the most amazing experience of our lives, and nobody cared. We told everyone we ran into about Jesus, and nobody wanted to hear it. 
I remember when I tried to tell my friends about Jesus and they all thought I was crazy. Well, imagine being one of three people living in a place who trusts in Jesus. Everyone else thinks you're a nut. <laughs> Try working on Wall Street. <laughs> so I thought that following the star and finding Jesus would change everything. I thought we'd get back home and everyone would finally believe. Instead, we got back home and I spent the rest of my life as a laughing stock. How did you not lose faith? Well, I wasn't completely alone. I had Malchior, of course. And believe it or not, Gaspar too. Finding Jesus changed him quite a bit. And I still had Daniel's scroll. Daniel's scroll? How did that help? Well, Daniel made this promise that one day the dead would rise again, uh, some to eternal life and others to everlasting shame and contempt. He said that those who were wise would shine like the brightness of the heavens. So I knew that everyone thought that I was a fool. But I also knew that trusting in Jesus, the anointed one, was the kind of wisdom Daniel was talking about. And if... No matter what happened, I held on to that wisdom. Then one day I'd shine. And here I am, shining as history's wise man. Yeah. Wow. Well, shine on. <laughs> shine on. Shine, shine on. on. Shine on. Thank you. So you guys were really a lot more in the dark than I thought. <sighs> Except for you, Mary. At least you knew what would happen. Knew what? Well, you knew what would happen to Jesus who he would grow up to be, what he was going to do, the whole die on the cross for our sins, rise in three days, savior of the world thing, rule over the universe forever and oh, ever. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <coughs> what gave you that idea? Wait, you're telling me you didn't know everything that was going to happen? I knew a little. Okay, I have some questions. For example, Mary, did you know no, 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 no. No, thank you. I have heard that song enough times that at this point, I'd prefer you serenade me with Baby Shark Doo 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 Baby Shark Doo 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 Sorry. But, you know, for everyone who has those same questions, allow me to get them out of the way for you all at once. No, I did not know he would give sight to a blind man. I didn't know he would calm the storm with his hands. I didn't know he would feed 5,000 people in one afternoon. And I didn't know he would walk on water. I mean, taking your kid to the beach is scary enough for an anxious mom. <laughs> Does that answer your questions? So, the angel didn't tell you all of that. Well, don't look at me. First off, my friend Gabe delivered the message to Mary, not me. And second off, he told her everything that God decided she needed to hear at the time. Don't be afraid, Mary. Mm, you... Wonder why Gabe had to say that. <laughs> <laughs> don't be afraid, Mary. You found favor with God. You're going to get pregnant, have a kid. You're going to name him Jesus. He's going to be the super awesome son of God. He's going to inherit the throne of David, and he's going to reign forever. And I said, let that all be true. But notice what's missing from that message? Pretty much everything Jesus ever did and everything that ever happened to him. <laughs> Fair point. I really do appreciate everything the angel did tell me, even if it wasn't everything. But I mean, have you ever considered that the rest of my life with Jesus would be so challenging? that I literally needed a message from God. I remember I was just 16 when that angel came to visit me and he told me I would be the mom of the one son of God. And I had faith in what I could not see. Would my fiance Joseph believe me? And judgment all around was crippling. Still, I knew my soul would sing. I am a servant of God. May your will be done in me. Your mercy flows through generations. And this child of yours will set us free. 
Stephen King. The first time that I saw his face, the first time that I held his frame, caught his gaze, spoke his name, Jesus. Baby Jesus sleeping at my breast. So when we fled to Egypt, he could rest. I'd never seen a child so blessed. Then teenage Jesus in Jerusalem. I thought I'd lost him, I was so alarmed. I held him tightly in between my arms. I never wanted him to come to harm. Then came the day my husband Joseph died. And on my sleeve that precious boy's tears dried. And I couldn't help but wonder why God would watch his son suffer and cry. But I knew he is a servant of God. May your will be done in him. Your mercy flows from his heart. And your spirit the servant's head for us and then he began his ministry he changed the water into wine for me he healed the sick and calmed the stormy sea the poor would eat the dead would breathe crowds of people came to follow him aching for hope and for his salvation and all that time he saw the words. It must have been such a relief to get him back. It was. I can't even describe it. There have been a lot of parents who have lost a child. I consider myself fortunate I actually got mine back. I do. But that didn't that didn't erase everything that had happened. Does that make sense? What do you mean? Well, when Jesus rose from the dead, there was a whole whirlwind of emotions. I mean, at first, I didn't believe it. And then I did believe it, but I was in shock. And then I was over the moon. I mean, I couldn't stop crying. I was just sobbing tears of joy a lot. I remember when I lost my labradoodle for the day. When she came back, I was sobbing. 
If that's how it feels to get your dog back, I can't imagine what it feels like to get your son back. Well, when he rose from the grave, I thought everything was fixed. The mess all cleaned up. But then the dream started. What dreams? I was there. Look around. Everyone here believes that Jesus died on the cross for their sins. That's how we all got here. But only a few of us were there to see it. None of you were there. I watched the nails pierce his hands. I heard his scratchy voice cry out in thirst. I watched the blood pool on the ground beneath him. My baby boy. And even after the resurrection, I couldn't get those images out of my mind. I would wake up in the middle of the night as my mind replayed the scene over and over again. <laughs> Seeing him alive again didn't undo the trauma of watching my son's life get ripped away. Having him around again, that definitely helped, but then he left a month and a half later, and I felt alone. I guess I never really thought about what you experienced. It's okay. I, I wouldn't expect anyone to, and... Well, it really is okay. You are amazing. But can I ask you something? How did you get through all of this? Oh, well, it took a while. Um, but one day, I was with Mary Magdalene, and wait, have you met Mary yet? Oh, she's awesome, I'll have to introduce you. She told me. Um, I was with Mary, and she was telling a group of people about the morning that Jesus rose from the grave. And I'd probably heard her tell this story 10,000 times, but this time it hit me differently. She was talking about how she had clung to Jesus when she saw him, and she never wanted to let go. But that Jesus told her she needed to let him go because he had to go to his father. I remember reading this in the Gospel of John. Right. Right? Yes. So when she mentioned him going to his father, it hit me that I wasn't the only parent who lost their child on Good Friday. I mean, I might be Jesus' mom, but he has a dad, too. Oh, no, no, she doesn't mean me. I was already here when all this was going down. Oh, of course. You mean God the Father, right? Right. Now, I'd always known that God was Jesus' father, but... Up until that point, I had not considered what it must have felt like for him to watch his son die. I mean, he was feeling everything that I was feeling. The pain and the heartache that I experienced was so awful. And he knew that. He experienced that pain right alongside me. It must have been comforting to be seen and understood. Yes, that's a great way of describing it. I felt so seen, but it was more than that. I mean, what I was feeling was so awful, I wouldn't wish it on anyone. And if I had my way, if I had a choice, I never would have wanted to feel that way. And that's what I found so mind-boggling, that I didn't have a choice. That pain was thrust upon me. But God chose to experience that. I mean, he's the light of the world. He never had to feel the agony of darkness. He actually had the choice not to feel the way that I felt. And yet he chose to experience the worst of it. And the reason that he chose to feel that pain was because he loved us. He loved me so much that he wanted to make a way for all of our pain and heartache to one day come to an end. Wow. 
I have been so caught up in wondering why God didn't fix all the messes in my life the way I thought he should. I completely missed. He chose to jump right into our mess with both feet. He really is amazing. <laughs> he really is. And as I saw to see him, and as I started to see him that way, it changed me. Now, don't get me wrong, it still didn't undo everything that had happened. But in the midst of those shadows, I knew that I was seen. God knew how I felt. He cared about how I felt. He even felt how I felt. And it gave me this confidence that even though I didn't always understand the dark times that I went through, I knew that God cared. And I knew just how far he was willing to go in order to light up the dark for good. And now, here we are. Look, no more shadows. Light of the world, treasure of heaven, brilliant like the stars in a wintry sky. Joy of the Father, reach through the darkness, shine across the earth, send the shadows to fly. Light of the world, from the beginning, the tragedies of time were no match for your love. From great heights of glory, you saw my story. God, you entered in and became one of us. Sing
Thank you so much for joining us for our show. We hope you enjoyed it. If we haven't met before, my name's Trevor. I'm one of the pastors here at Beacon, and we are so delighted that you decided to share Christmas Fest with us. Now, uh, you might have gathered from the show that we, we, we think Jesus is a pretty big deal, uh, and it turns out that he thinks you are a really big deal. And so whatever your background is, wherever you're coming from, if you don't have a church home, we would be honored to walk alongside you as you explore if there's anything to this whole Jesus thing. And so we have service tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. We have Christmas Eve services with candlelight celebrations happening next Friday and Saturday. We invite you to come and check it out. We have guests every week. And we'd love for you to uh, just take some time to explore these things with us. We love you. We appreciate you. And we hope you have a very Merry Christmas. <laughs>